Welcome. Today we're going to show you a great technique on how to break down frozen shoulder adhesive capsulitis. We're going to focus in the glenohumeral joint, particularly uh, where the humerus, the head of the humerus, meets up in the glenoid fossa. And we're going to break down adhesions. So Dan, one of the finest therapists here, is going to demonstrate this on Aaron, another great therapist. Uh, these guys know the biomechanics very well. And so I'm going to have them demonstrate, and I'll be talking and communicating with you uh, as we go about this particular procedure. Uh, Dan, go ahead and start uh, with Aaron. Now, Aaron has a frozen shoulder. He's had issues in the past, and he's been working with Dan on this, but he's really coming along really well. Uh, I want you to explain a little bit what we're doing uh, with the shoulder, Dan, and uh, the technique that's been effective with many of your clients. Okay, Dan's going to demonstrate uh, what he's going to do in here to uh, break down the adhesion. This particular technique he's been doing for 20 years or so with many, many uh, athletes. And uh, he's going to go ahead and demonstrate a quick procedure on how to free up that, that joint. Go ahead, Dan. First, what I want to do is make sure there's some good blood flowing in here. Warm it up. Now, coming in here, I want to stabilize the shoulder here as I go in here. So in other words, you're stabilizing the shoulder downwards, putting pressure anterior to posterior, externally rotating the, the arm. Okay, good. Then I give it a gentle traction. As you pull out, you're tractioning it to open up the, the head of the humerus to pull it out of the, uh, the fossa. Okay. okay. Go ahead and give okay. some room here so they can see on the camera. Go ahead. Okay, so in other words, you're externally rotating and pulling. Good, good. So you're opening up the joint space between the head of the humerus and the glenoid fossa. Good. Okay. So obviously you're, you're, you're pulling, externally rotating. Go ahead. Now I'm going to go the other way. Okay, tell, so, so let's back up a little bit for a second, Dan. Uh, at the beginning, let's start the procedure again as you were doing it. Explain what you're doing now. Okay, I'm sta stabilizing the, the shoulder here. Up on top, okay. Up on top as I'm pushing into it. So you're pushing into the joint. Go ahead. And now you're ex external rotation. Okay. And giving it a gentle traction. traction. Perfect. Good. To the comfort level of the patient. Okay. Good. Perfect. Perfect. Now, how many re how many repetitions are you doing on that? Three on each side. Three on each side. Okay. Now you're going to do another three repetitions. Now go ahead. Now, now, you now I'm going to be working the same thing, but this time with internal rotation and gentle traction. Okay. So are you still going to compress upwards? So. Yes. Okay. So you're going to push upwards into the joint. As you push upwards, go ahead. You are internally rotating, correct? Good. And now you're pulling outwards. Good. Let's let the camera see that now. You gotta stand off to the side. Okay, pushing in. Externally inter internally rotating. And go ahead and pushing outwards. Good. Okay, perfect. So okay, one more. Good. Perfect. So, okay, so so basically what he's doing here is he's trying to open up the glenohumeral joint and what he's doing first he's pushing inwards externally rotating and then tractioning those three of those and then he's pushing in internally rotating okay and then tractioning okay that's now uh, Dan talks about uh, releasing the pectoralis muscle correct correct the pectoralis muscle when it's too tight it's going to push the shoulder forward it's going to pronate the shoulders forward and so here, I just want to loosen it up a little, get a little blood going in there, pressure and stretch. Okay, so you're applying pressure downwards on the pectoral tendon. As you hold it down, you're pushing down as you're stretching that tendon. Very good, because by putting motion on that area, by holding the restriction, you're going to get more movement in there. Good. And I'm also making sure I'm not putting any pressure on the front of the shoulder. Okay, so primarily on the pec. So now I come here and I have Aaron push up. Make sure you come on to the side so you can, the camera can see you. I want to have Aaron push up against my resistance to his comfort level. Okay, let go. So by him pushing up against it, it's kind of like a PNF. Kind of like resisting just to release that muscle. Now, now th this is a, actually a very good technique. Good. Uh, then let me, get, let me show you. This is actually a good technique. I just wanted to just let you know 
that when you're stretching the pec, a lot of people are good in the doorway and stretch the pecs, which is still good. But this particular technique, when you have someone do it on you, when you contact that, that pec muscle, as it gets up, up near the shoulder, you don't want to push on the shoulder. You want to be on the pec muscle. And as you're stretching, as you're holding it down, you don't need to push too hard because he's going to really feel it stretch in there. But the key thing is when he pushes up, push up against my hand, okay, about three, four, five seconds and relax, and you go back down again, you're going to notice more motion. That's called PNF, proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And that's an excellent technique to do to help release those tight pecs because those tight pecs, what does it do? It brings you forward, okay? It actually pronates your shoulders forward. And when you're pronating the shoulder, what you're doing is you're limiting the space between the glenohumeral joint. And that's where a lot of problems start to occur. So when you have this shoulder restriction, remember, bursitis, tendonitis, uh, adhesive capsulitis, all these kind of conditions have to do with lack of movement. Whenever you have a problem with the shoulder, the worst thing you can do is nothing. Meaning that people think that rest is good, rest is bad. You want to increase mobility as soon as possible. So these, these particular techniques uh, paired up, again, as I said, with a friend, a loved one, or someone that can work with you on this can really save your health and kind of save your life because you're going to feel a whole lot better. I ask you to share this video with others. Subscribe if you haven't so you can continue to receive the best of the self-help videos here on the Internet. And most important, make it a great day. I'm Dr. Alan Mandel. Thank you.